Hi everyone. In this video, we will be covering how to interpret blood on MRI scans. I am Mohammed Draz, and this is Brain, Spine, and Beyond. By the end of this video, you learn about how the blood look like on the MRI scan, why it looks like that, how does it change with different blood age. I will share with you an algorithm to easily remember this in day-to-day -day practice. And if you are lucky to stay until the end, I will share a summary infographic that summarizes everything for you. Sounds good. Let's crack on. The blood on MRI scan can be very confusing. On T1 imaging, sometimes it can be hypo-intense, iso-intense, and other times it can be hyper-intense. When we get to T2-weighted imaging, life doesn't get easier. You can see high-intense signals, low-intense signals, or sometimes mixed intensity. Some would suggest using different mnemonic like these ones, which is always very difficult to remember and you look like a crazy person singing a crazy song. In this video, we will go through a simple way to remember these differences so you don't forget it again. In this algorithm, we will use two tools. Blood, where we will assess different ages of blood on MRI, acute, subacute, and chronic. And on MRI imaging, we will use T1 weighted images. Do we need any other sequence? The reality is no, you don't need T2 because T2 tells you the stage of blood in each of those earlier phases, e.g. early acute or late acute. And in real life, that's not necessary. I am sorry, I said two tools, but we will need another tool, which is steak. If you are vegetarian, you can use an apple. One important fact to remember, T1 loves protein, you remember that by the T in protein. While T2 loves water, you remember that by 2 in H2O. Let's see how this translates to acute blood. The blood in the acute stage is pouring out of blood vessels, as you can see. This means it's watery. How does this translate to our protein and water example? This means more water than protein. Form what we said earlier, T1 loves protein. In this case, it's low protein content. How does this translate for T1 signal on MRI scan? As you might know, the acute hemorrhage looks bright on CT scan like this one. On T1 MRI, it will be ISO intense. Why again? T1 loves protein and we don't have much protein here. How this relates to our steak example? The steak can be rare, medium, or well done. If it's rare, it means it has more water. Not everyone likes a rare done steak. You are kind of okayish with it, so it's ISO intense. In the subacute phase, uh, the protein content goes up and water reduces. How does this happen? Think of the same steak example if we heat it up more. Water will evaporate. It becomes medium done. You love it this way, it becomes tender. Protein is up. T1 loves it. It becomes hyper intense. Let's see how this looks like in real examples. And you can see this hemorrhage is bright on T1 and it's subacute. You might say, I don't believe you as I am used to see blood on CT scans, not MRI. I get your point. Here is a CT scan of this subdural hematoma. The blood is not bright, meaning it's not acute and it's not dark, so it's not chronic as well. So, it's subacute. If we do MRI scan, it appears bright, hyper-intense. You might argue again that life is not that easy. I would agree again. This is a T1 with iso-intense part, meaning this is acute blood. But as we do the scan few weeks later, it looks like it's bright from outside, iso-intense from the inside. As you are now expert in T1 signals of the blood, you can say that blood is aging and showing different intensities. Let's move to another blood age. In the chronic phase, the protein gets destroyed. Protein lysis happens, leading to release of iron from the heme part of the hemoglobin, and water will continue to disappear. Let's use the same example of steak barbecue. If we heat the steak more, it will be more dried. It will start to burn and have an outer black layer. It means it becomes dark on T1, even water dries up, which means that even on T2 it becomes dark as well. But no one loves burnt steak. This means it will be dark in all sequences. Let's see these examples. This one is a subdural hematoma on the left side. It's dark, but to be honest, it is not absolutely dark, which means that intensity decreases as the time goes by. So if we look into this four-year-old scan after ITH, you can see on T1 it's dark. Ah, I see you can't see it. Here it's... To make it more clear, let's see T2. It's still dark. 
because as we said earlier, no one likes burnt steak. To summarize, we have three phases of blood. One main fact, T1 loves protein. In the acute phase, protein is less than water, so it's iso-intense. In the subacute phase, protein starts to increase as dry out the water by heating up the steak, so it becomes hyper-intense. In the chronic phase, both protein and water decreases as we are burning the steak. No one likes it, so it's dark. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know in the comments below what topics you want to see next on the channel. Don't forget to share our videos and